podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. As many of us continue to work at New Year's resolutions of losing weight, eating better, and exercising, there are some other things we should be doing to maintain our health. Dr. Martanza Parekh of Raleigh Endoscopy Centers recently stopped by our studios to talk about some of them. Dr. Martanza Parekh, welcome to North Carolina Now. Oh, thanks for having me. March is Colon Cancer Awareness Month. You are a gastroenterologist in Raleigh. What do we need to know during this Awareness Month about colon cancer? Well, so, you know, one of the big things, you're right, March is Colon Cancer Awareness Month, and so we're really trying to kind of raise awareness for colon cancer screening and, uh, and prevention programs for colon cancer. And I think the biggest things that we really want to hammer home to folks are that um, colon cancer is a, a preventable cancer, and uh, colon cancer screening saves lives and having it done can really make a difference, impact someone's life, impact someone's family's lives. Um, and that colonoscopy, which is the most common type of colon cancer screening, is also the most effective uh, means of screening for colorectal cancer. According to the CDC, up to 60% of colorectal cancers could be prevented by screenings. Mm -hmm. You mentioned a colonoscopy. What other type of screenings are available? Right, so, so colonoscopy is, um, again, probably the prefer most preferred method of screening, but I tell my patients, you know, there's some people that are nervous about colonoscopies or for some reason or other can't have a colonoscopy, and then any type of screening is the best screening because it's better than nothing. And other options that we have are uh, fecal occult blood tests, which detect blood in the stool. Um, there are also some stool DNA tests available, which can also detect abnormalities in the stool. Um, and then there's a flexible sigmoidoscopy, which is a shorter version of a colonoscopy, examining pretty much the bottom third of the colon. Um, and then various x-ray uh, methods, primarily a barium enema. And many people have heard about virtual colonoscopy, which has kind of gotten some press in the last few years. And that's something, it's an amazing technology. And, and someday we're hoping that it's going to be a great adjunct to colonoscopy. And right now it's still a few years away as far as the technology and, and ready for everybody to be screened. But so. When should you start thinking about getting screened mm -hmm. for colon cancer? Well, so it kind of all depends on each person's history. Typically, um, the age that we talk about is age 50. Uh, for people who are what we call average risk, meaning they don't have any symptoms, they're not having any bleeding, not having any abdominal pain, diarrhea, constipation, or anything like that. If someone has a history of colon cancer or even colon polyps in their family, whether it be a first degree relative or multiple second degree relatives, uh, then we start screening a little bit earlier, typically at age 40, but sometimes even earlier depending on the age. Um, and then a third category that gets tested a little bit earlier is people who have inflammatory bowel disease, so such as ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. Um, so 50 is kind of the magic number, but there's many people that need to be screened a little bit earlier, especially people with family history. So talking to your primary care physicians or consulting with a gastroenterologist to find out when the right age is for you. What are the symptoms of colon cancer? Yeah, so that's one of the, that's one of the tough parts, and it goes back to the CDC idea um, or the CDC notion of 60% of colon cancers are preventable. The most common symptom when someone has colon cancer is nothing. Uh, and that's one of the tough parts. It's, it, and, you know, having a colonoscopy when you feel well sometimes feels like a strange thing. It's a big test, it's a big deal, a lot of work the night before and, and coming in to get, it, uh, get the examination. But we want to see, we want to do colonoscopies on people who feel well because those are the folks that we can find polyps in and prevent colon cancers. Uh, some symptoms that people can develop over time, they can develop blood in their stool, um, abdominal pain, changes in their bowel habits, so being more constipated, or changes in the way their stools look, thin like a pencil, narrow like a ribbon. So those are some of the red flags that we look out for. What are some of the risk factors? So biggest risk factors, like we kind of talked about a little bit earlier, are a history of inflammatory bowel disease in, a, in, in an individual. Uh, so those type of diseases, such as ulcerative colitis and, and Crohn's disease, can increase your risk for colon cancer um, after about a decade of disease. Uh, and then other risk factors are a history of colon cancer or polyps in family, uh, smoking, over 20 pack years of, hit, uh, of smoking over, over many years um, is a risk factor. And we're finding that obesity, unfortunately, is another risk factor, as it is for many other types of cancer, but it's also a risk factor for colon cancer. So what do we all need to be doing to reduce some of those risk factors? Mm -hmm. So, you know, the things that we tell, tell all our patients, uh, a good healthy diet, a good healthy lifestyle, exercise, you know, moderation and weight, and, uh, you know, a good diet that includes plenty of fruits, vegetables, grains, um, controlling your cholesterol, you know, not smoking, those are the big things, but, but really the best thing you can do to prevent colon cancer is to get screened. Screening is what really saves lives, and, and, and colonoscopy is one of the best means of doing that. Your company, Raleigh Endoscopy Centers, is mm -hmm. involved with a national campaign right. this month called mm -hmm. Stop Colon Cancer Now. Tell us about that and, and what you're hoping that people will connect and learn from this campaign. 
Right, so it's been great. We've been working with them for about three years now, and um, the Raleigh Endoscopy Center, it's a collection of endoscopy centers in, in, in Raleigh and Cary, and our managers and the nurses in our endoscopy centers uh, work really hard every year, and we put on a race, and so it's called Get Your Rear in Gear. It just happened last weekend, and it was over at Fred Fletcher Park in, in Raleigh, and we actually had over 1,000 participants, well over 1,000 participants this year. Started off with 500 people a couple years ago, 700 last year and 1,000 this year, so it's growing every year, and, and these guys really work hard, do a great job, and it's uh, co-sponsored by this larger coalition called Stop Colon Cancer Now. There's a website called uh, StopColonCancerNow.com, which is a great resource for people if they want to learn a little bit more about colon cancer and colon cancer screening. Mm -hmm. And so our real goal is just to, to raise awareness in the community just through things like this today, and, and that's why we really appreciate you guys helping us out. What do you most often answer? Which questions do you most often answer in your patients that you really want viewers across the state to know? What's, right. What is that information that is so important? No, so I think, you know, the biggest thing, again, is do I really need a colonoscopy? You know, that's the question I get from most from my patients when they come to visit me beforehand. Um, and I, I really tell them, you know, if you meet those criteria, if you're over 50 and you've never been screened before, if you have a history in your family and you're 40 or over or sometimes even younger than that, or if you've had inflammatory bowel disease, you really do need to think about getting a colonoscopy because if we can prevent a colon cancer by finding a polyp and removing it, that's a huge plus. And also, even if there is, heaven forbid, a colon cancer, the, the cure rate for, for colon cancers early on is about 90%. The cure rate for colon cancers when they're advanced is about 10%. So we're talking a 9 in 10 chance versus a 1 in 10 chance. By doing a simple test that's a very safe, effective test, takes one day and, um, and can really make a big difference in your life and your family's lives. Mm -hmm. And once again, if our viewers want to find out more information about mm -hmm. colon cancer, what is a good resource for them to go to? Well, so one of the best resources is the, the website that we talked about a little bit earlier, stopcoloncancerdown.org, and uh, evaluating that. And then also um, the WebMD is a great resource for colon cancer screening awareness. Um, so those are two of the websites that I, uh, that I recommend to my patients. Great. Mm -hmm. Dr. Park, thank you so oh. much for coming in and sharing all of this information with us. No, thanks again. I really appreciate it. And, and again, what we really want to stress is that, you know, colon cancer screening, it really saves lives and make a big difference. And, and for people to consider colonoscopy, which is probably the most effective way of doing that. Thanks again. Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV.